Hello, I'm Jake, also known as King, and uh, we're going to be playing Faster Than Light today. Um, Faster Than Light, for those of you who don't know, is a spaceship simulation real-time roguelike -like game. That's the official genre, but I mean, I agree with the spaceship simulation part, but I would call it more like a real-time strategy RPG type game. And uh, you'll see that in a second. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, actually. I've been playing it a bit on my laptop, but I haven't done anything on this desktop, so it will be a fresh run. So here's the Kestrel. This is our ship. Um, you can unlock other ships through various means, but we're going to stick with this one for now, because it's the only one we have. Um, and as you can see, there's a bunch of different aspects of the ship and systems. and yeah, you have to maintain your ship, allocate power, um, and kill other bad ships, and it's a lot of fun. We'll get into that. But first, let's start by naming our crew and our ship. So, uh, Enzi Enzo, Martin, no, sorry buddy. We're going to name our crew after famous scientists, Galileo. Here we've got Newton, and we can't forget, of course, Copernicus. Copernic oh. Copernicus. Yeah, I can spell. All right, so there we have our people, and we're gonna rename our ship, and we're gonna be the Globe Trotters. Ah, no. Well, we'll get rid of the. We're the globe trotters because we're badasses, and we're gonna go on easy. And uh, don't judge me. This is a really hard game, but it's a lot of fun. Um, oh, you get more scrap. That's awesome. Anyways, um, uh, yeah. So this game has a permadeath system so basically once you die you're dead and you have to restart so yeah it's a lot of fun I mean I haven't beaten it yet even on easy so that should show you just how hard it actually is and we're not gonna do um, a completely normal run we're also gonna try and go for this layout that you can unlock so you, you need at least two out of three achievements here to unlock it and here are the three achievements we can either well of the three one of them is you have to have six unique aliens on your cruiser, which means all the different alien races, which we'll see. That one's a hard one. Um, I haven't got that one on my laptop either. Uh, but this one is easier to get. Have every system and subsystem installed on the cruiser at once. So we start with basically everything. All we need, all we need is the cloaking device, the droid control, and the teleporter. So those are expensive, but we can do it. And then this one, which is kind of tough to get, but I have a plan. You have to get your ship down to one health, and then you have to repair it back up to full. So yeah, let's try and get two of these three and unlock a new layout. This could go horribly, but I have faith in us and our globe trotters. So here we go. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip cloaking. We don't need to read that. Continue. So, we're in space. We've got a shield. And basically, the whole the reason the name of the game is FTL, Faster Than Light, is because it's sort of centered around this movement system, the FTL Drive, which is basically, you can travel between beacons in space, which is always random. And, yeah, you travel there faster than light, and you use up fuel, which so you have to manage fuel, which kind of sucks. And I've been stranded once, and it's actually, you, you don't get game over as soon as you're stranded. You just have to wait, and you could put out like a distress beacon, which is kind of cool. Anyways, uh, traveling in Nebula makes the Rebel fleet actually pursue you slower, as you can probably read, I'm 
sure you can read. Um, so let's let's not go there. Nebules are a little more dangerous. But we want to hit as many of these beacons as possible so we can get as much scrap as we can. So let's start off here. And, of course, we're fighting someone already. Well, we can. Scans show a remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. The ship hastily messaged you. Stay out of this or you'll be next. Concentrate fire on... Yeah. Someone. Let's uh, make them concentrate fire on us. Let's attack the shit out of them. You asked for it! They pull away from the planet and move in to engage. So, you can pause. I haven't actually moved my people yet. Let's get Newton on the guns. He, Newton's got big guns. Everyone knows that. And uh, we'll get Copernicus here on the shields. And the reason I'm putting them there is not all the systems have this, but some systems have little monitors that you can station people at, and that will make those systems run more effectively. And... I didn't explain this yet. This here is the, our reactor, which has all of our power, available power, and we can allocate power to different things. So here, I can take it off of our shields, but, you know, shields are good, we should keep those. Our engines are here, which increases our dodge chance, and they have to be on to use the FTL. Uh, our oxygen, which obviously is important. Med bay, less important, unless you're fighting people, which can happen. People can teleport onto your ship, which I would often die when I first started playing this game. But I've man, I've developed a strategy to deal with them. I basically just try and suffocate them by opening all the airlocks, and I just hang out here in this first room. And then when they finally get in here and they're low health because they've been suffocating, I just kill them. Either that or just sit in the med bay and kill them in there because they don't get healed. Anyway, so we have three power that we're not using, and we need three power for our guns to power both of them up. So that's perfect. So we activate both of these. And... I'm going to save missiles, because we only have eight, and I tell ya, later on, missiles are definitely important, because if you don't have them, you're pretty much screwed. So let's take down this guy, and we'll start, we don't have to take out his shields, because the way shields work, after one laser hits them, they go down, temporarily, before, and then, you know, they take a couple seconds to come back up. So this burst laser fires three lasers, so... If I shoot, one will hit the shield and the other two will hit the missiles. Their weapon system. So I can probably take that down. And unpause. Go. Look at them. Alright, here we go. And it's, they have to charge, obviously. It, it's You can't just shoot. Oh. Ah, faggot. Missed. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, oh, I feel foolish now. Anyways. Um, I could shoot the missile. I mean, it's charged. But oh, are you fucking kidding me? Oxygen down. Go, Copernicus. Newton. My bad. Uh, yeah. So their guns are down. Now they can't hit me unless they repair their stuff. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to destroy them. Yeah. And they can do nothing. There's their cockpit down. And now I'm gonna take out their oxygen, and that will kill them because their hull has two health left. So. Pew, pew, pew. Dead. Yay! And I pick through the remains and contact the settlement. I get this is what I get from the ship remains. So three fuel, two missiles, twenty-one scrap. Scrap is sort of like the currency in this game, which is here. You can use it to upgrade your ship and buy new things. Uh, the pirate's gone. You signal the station. We appreciate what you've done, but there's just, but there'll just be another ship looking to profit from our isolation soon enough. Sorry, we can't give you more. Fuel one, missiles one, scrap twelve. It's not bad. It's more than I would have got if I just killed the ship. I don't hate you guys. Let's get Newton back on the guns. Unfortunately, these don't stay charged when you jump. When you get to a place, they're powered down, but you can get an upgrade to your ship that will have them preloaded when you get there, which I never am able to get because by the time I am able to buy it, I don't have enough money to buy it. Aw, oh, damn it. Okay, so... You arrive at the beacon to find yourself dangerously close to a star. An automated rebel ship impervious to the heat moves in to engage. This is... I hate dealing with these, uh, suns. Because what happens is... Solar flares will come and set random parts of my ship on fire. And it's just a pain to deal with. So let's try and deal with this guy as quickly as possible. So we can get out of here. 
Uh, yeah, they, they have no shields, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Of course, I will get some fire on me, but what are you going to do? Uh, I just can't kill him fast enough to get away. Bastard. We need our uh, engine for sure, because without that we'll be sitting ducks, and then we'll just our entire ship will be on fire, basically. Just fire everywhere. Uh, oh, right in the engine room. Good thing you was there. Uh, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Oh yeah. 21 scrap. So, um, uh, we can't actually upgrade our ship because we're in danger. But, as soon as this is charged, we can leave. Hopefully before the next solar flare. Get back there, and change. So let's go here, because we the way I'm probably going to head is to this one, and then around this way to the exit. And depending on where the rebels are, you'll see them on the map soon. Um, we should be able to get out. And visit a lot of locations as well. So, more money. Less problems. Rebel ship has been patrolling this region. As soon as you arrive, it begins its assault. Bastards, I hate rebels. This isn't like Star Wars, where the rebels are the good guys. The rebels are definitely bad in this. They're... We're the Empire, but imagine the Empire was good. Yeah. Or maybe we are bad, who knows. Uh, but I think we have the Death Star plans. So, I guess the Rebels have the Death Star. So... Yeah. Oh! This guy only have one gun? And where is his droids? Drones. I keep calling them droids. I'll, I'll probably just stick with droids, just to uh... Because I'm just going to keep correcting myself, and I'd rather not. Shields down. Let's take down his O2. See, this guy doesn't stand a chance. Th this first sector is pretty easy. Oh man, actually, they're repairing that. Thing. There we go. They've definitely got good crew on board. Good fixin'. Um, but yeah, rebels are dicks. Um, usually. After you start killing things, they try and surrender and offer you stuff. But usually when we're dealing with rebels, it doesn't matter what they're offering me. I, I usually just kill them. Unless it's like really good what they're offering. Because uh, I hate them. I, I hope they all die. Um, and that doesn't make me a bad person. Uh, they want me dead too, so it's fair. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Fuel 1, missiles 1, scrap 16. Oh yeah. So this is like the upgrade screen. But I'm not, I'm saving my money. I mean, we're only in sector 1 anyway, so I don't need any upgrades. And I want to buy all the things I need. Uh, I skipped ahead, but you can see the rebels kind of moving up. Looks like there's no way around a fight. That's fine. Oh. The ship starts to power up its FTL drive. If it gets away, it will no doubt warn the fleet of your position. See, that's what they do sometimes. But this guy has no shields, so I don't know what he's thinking. Well, he doesn't think. He's an auto scout. There's no one on board. So I'm just going to take out his engines, and then he'll be a seating, sitting, seating. He'll be a seating duck. I hate seating ducks. And then take out his guns, because... Oh, look, he took down our doors. I'm not too worried about our shields, though, so I'll send uh, Copernicus there to heal it up. Oh, Newton's actually taking some damage. I'm going to send him to heal. Their ship breaks apart. You feel relief in the knowledge that you will hopefully still be one step ahead of the fleet. Yep. It's all healed. Doors are all fixed. Doors, you can upgrade. Um, right now you can... If the doors are broken, you can't do this, which is automatically open them, which is sort of necessary for fighting fires and sometimes, like I said, intruders, because you can suffocate them. And you can upgrade your doors to prevent fire and people from getting through them faster. Yeah, you can see the rebel fleet is moving much faster now. Uh, but I can stay ahead of them if I travel along this way, and I might be able to hit up a couple of these beacons before I exit and get to the next sector. And I need a store. 
You arrive at a populated sector. One merchant seems to be mass broadcasting a request for a mercenary ship to aid him. Shall we respond? Yes. Great. I was worried no one would respond. My usual carrier is days late. I need you to deliver this cargo of drone parts to a small station a few jumps from here. I'll pay you a bit of scrap now, but they will surely tip you generously. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. There's no, uh, questionable morals there, so... I mean... I probably wouldn't care anyway. I like money. So, he gave me five drone parts. I don't use drones, so I don't need to steal them or anything. Great! I uploaded their location to your star map. I'm running out of options, so I have no choice but to trust... You'll do what you have to agreed to. Oh, man. Ah, uh, I'm bad at words. Oh, that wasn't far at all. Hopefully I don't get ambushed. Usually, half the time, probably, these quests end in ambush. You arrive, uh, you arrive at the location given to you by the merchant. You are supposed to deliver drone parts to a station here. You find a small research station and discover that it's putting out a distress signal. Strangely, there is no response to your hails. Um, I'm going to dock. You know, take a risk. High risk, high reward, I guess. Inside, there are signs of a great struggle. Scientists lie dead where they fell, brutally dismembered. You grab a few research drone parts lying on a desk near the door and leave quickly. I wonder what happened. Will we ever find out? Probably not. This game doesn't really work that way. But it's good fun. So I'm not criticizing it. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. Oh, I'm attacking that shit. Uh, burst laser your lasers. There's no way to speed up the game, unfortunately. Oh. Bastard. Well, he's screwed anyway. Yeah, you can see uh, how well things are being repaired here. I didn't realize that for the first multiple playthroughs, so I was just sitting here watching them fix it going, Come on, come on! But, you know. Salvage what you can for the broken ship. The station was either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have lain unused for quite some time. You find nothing useful. Darn. Oh well. I'm surprised I haven't run into any stores yet, actually. I'm gonna go here, and hopefully I can make it there, otherwise I'll just leave. Ah, oh, damn. Your scans reveal an ore refinery and several factories. All standing still and empty. No life signs detected. Okay. Nothing happened. Uh, I can't make it there, but I can make it here. And then head out. Um, yeah, should be fine. Oh no, a energy fighter. You come across a pirate in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship. You quickly receive a transmission from the pirate. Stay out of this fight, and we'll make it worth your while. Um, accept the bribe. That's, uh, I don't know. I could probably get better than that just by killing them. And it's only Sector 1. So I'm going to try and be a hero, just for my own benefit, and attack the pirate. The pirate ship sto stops its pursuit and locks weapons onto your ship. Attack! He's got nothing. Once his weapons are down, he's going to be uh, a seeding duck. Oh, he's got missiles, though. Well, you've, provo you've proved a sufficient match for the pirates. They are powering up their FTL and trying to get away. All like hell you are. Take out your fucking engines. And, uh, fix those doors. Ah, Copernicus. Uh, yeah, each... Oh, well, I'll kill them first. Fine, our previous offer was not... Fine, our previous offer was not generous enough. Let's improve it. Um, reverse ion field. I don't know what that does, but... Augments are pretty good. And I won't get that for sure if I, if I kill them. So let's just... Ex if I accept, will I still be able to hail the ship they were chasing? Let's find out. I'm going to accept. Boom. Nope. Damn. I guess they got away or something. There we go. Let's see what that does. So this is the equipment screen. You can, uh, I don't have drones but I can have up to four guns 
These are my augmentations. Protects your ship from iron damage, giving a 20% chance to negate it entirely. That's decent. I mean, if I don't use it, then I can just sell it. So... I'm not going to be able to make it to that distress beacon, and I don't have time to go there, so I'm on my way to the exit. You arrived at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Scanners are showing intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. No match for them can be found in the database. Hmm, interesting, a new life form. You land a small shuttle in an enormous field whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six legged horse like animals. Could they be what your screens picked up? So I imagine, like, basically tiny unicorns. Rainbow unicorns, but they have six legs. Hmm. Try to communicate peacefully. Bring some of the creatures on board to sell or leave. I'm going to bring some on board to sell. Um, because I need money to buy all my things to get the achievement. So, the seemingly docile creatures quickly turn violent when you show your hostile intentions. They stampede with terrifying force, trampling one of your crew members before you have time to react. You fight your way back to the shuttle, prepare to jump. Oh no, who... Oh no! Galileo! Oh no. Now who's our pilot? Newton or Copernicus? Copernic. Can't fit. Um. Well, yeah, I'm gonna leave Newton on the guns. Because recharging guns faster, which is what he does when he's uh, working there, is pretty useful. So. Yeah, okay. We're gonna jump next sector. Uncharted Nebula or Uncharted Nebula? Hmm, tough decision, guys. Um, I'm probably gonna go the top one, though, because I can go to this civilian sector. Although there's more money in hostile sectors, that's for sure. So maybe I'll go there. I'll go there. Zoo! You've entered a nebula-rich sector. You may put a few light years on the fleet, but that's only useful if you make it to the other side. Anyways, that's all for sector one, and I'll do sector two in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.